Om Sri Sai Ram I offer my humble pranams at the lotus feet of our most beloved Bhagwan dear brothers and sisters of Sai family and my loving students my loving greetings to one and all thank you for being with me today and i am grateful to each and every one of you for this invite and being part of this wonderful retreat i like this name or the theme of your retreat pathway to prashanti nilayam very nice theme i was wondering past two years because of this pandemic all of us were cornered maybe between four walls as swami says satya dharma shanti prema we are arrested in four walls and on top we have the ceiling ceiling on desires we can't do anything we are pinned down we are nailed down in between four walls in the course of time i'm feeling that we are drifting away from the path which we used to tread we used to follow and we used to enjoy the pathway to prashanti nilayam i know everyone's journey to sai is different is special and it is unique and it's never stereotype the way we reach we adore and we love swami is same the pathway to prashanti nilayam in search of peace and love the simplicity the beauty and the grandeur of swami he welcomes all of us with his open hands with the same love irrespective of our caste creed color status power position nationality he doesn't see that he just sees you he observes you and he enjoys and he reflects the love that you give to him that is why swami always says there is only one language the language of heart there is only one caste the caste of humanity and there is only one religion the religion of love and there is only one god and he is omnipresent many times i have observed many people used to ask swami who are you maybe old devotees if they can recollect in some discourse swami have given a beautiful answer to this question who is sai baba and who are you for that question three simple words with profound meaning and those words are come experience and enjoy then you will know who is sai baba my topic today is journey to sai and i am linking these three words come experience and enjoy with my topic journey to sai i know all of us when we reach prashanti nilayam it was a great journey i will say it is like a pilgrimage and all of us have a beautiful story how we reached or how we adored this place prashanti nilayam i was blessed and fortunate to be born in a sai family i would like to share with you my journey to sai my grandmother shrimati pankajamma 
she came to swami in 1948 then my father first time he visited prashanti nilayam in 1951 i was born 1958 i'm 63 years old model but for 63 years i've been part and parcel of this beautiful love which swami was showering on us and our family our family deity was lord venkateshwara but as i was growing my parents told me swami is your guru and swami is your god and i started experiencing swami as and when we used to come to prashanti nilayam those days when we used to visit prashanti nilayam we cannot get back that easily minimum 2 weeks sometimes even a month we used to stay and without swami's blessings without swami's permission we cannot leave prashanti nilayam those were those were the days beautiful days that kind of affinity that kind of attachment that kind of love that kind of devotion between the devotees and our sweet bhagwan i would like to narrate how my journey to prashanti nilayam journey to sai during my young days from chennai we used to travel we used to get down at penukonda bangalore bangalore to penukonda and penukonda we used to take a horse driven cart that will come and leave us near bokapatnam and we will change over to bullock cart all the luggage children and ladies will be seated and the bullock cart will cross chitravati river and come this side to parthi and all the gents used to push the bullock cart in order to ease for the you know for crossing the river and we used to have 5 feet in some places you know 5 and 1/2 feet in the center we used to have that kind of you know water flowing crystal clear water that is how those days it was a pilgrimage to come to prashanti nilayam my grandmother she had come to prashanti nilayam visited prashanti nilayam 1948 first time with her friends from chennai and her devotion the way swami used to treat the old devotees and they all used to stay in patham mandiram because prashanti mandir was not constructed everybody used to stay in patham mandiram i still remember kishtappa used to have a petromax light and he used to guard and guide all the devotees those days not much of crowd and the closeness with bhagwan is amazing it's a divine experience spiritual experience i would narrate one interview that we had with bhagwan with which changed our lifestyle those days minimum two interviews three interviews we used to get as a family and that time myself my father and mother my small younger sister swami called for interview swami blessed us and in the course of interview swami looked at my mother and suddenly he said vijaya whatever that you are having everything you will lose my mother used to deck herself with lot of bangles and diamond necklaces because her father was a doctor in malaysia he lived in kamerun islands and he used to send everything to his daughter and she loves to deck all these things and that is how she was brought up and she did her ba music in adyar music college and she is a very good veena player and she we even we used to visit swami in that interview looked at her and told that vijaya you will lose everything a day will come you and your husband will fight like dogs he looked at my father and told you will lose your job and he looked at my mother and he told that all your relatives will become your enemy and they will create rift within the family 
your father also will not talk to you everybody will leave you everyone will desert you and you will be alone the amount of suffering that you are going to go through you will get so much frustrated and you look at me eh hey, sai baba i believed in you you also ditched me and i am in so much of trouble you forsake me and you will throw my photograph outside and that is the time my mother got jittery imagine a family which is well off comfortable happy here swami is standing in front of you and predicting your future this is not one in our life in my life also swami has told many such things years before and only thing is much much later when the time comes it all happened swami words never failed in our life so swami told this my mother cleverly what she did she just fell down caught hold of swami's lotus feet and started crying and said swami swami even if we forget even if we throw your photograph outside swami please you don't leave us and swami lovingly looked at her and said pichidana hey mad lady how will i live tinadaniki tindi undadaniki stalamu kattukodaniki battalu in english food to eat place to stay and clothes to wear is my responsibility you have to go through this in your life remember i will be there always with you i will not forsake you and then swami gave a beautiful example do you know kite galipatam kite the kite will go far and far and far you your family will leave me and go far and far and far but remember the rope is in my hand even if you go far i know when the time comes i will draw you closer and you will come back to me that was the assurance baba gave that day anyway swami blessed swami predicted our future and it's not pleasant it is most unpleasant one but when you trust in him when you believe in him and when he guides you you just have to accept best thing is you have to surrender to him and he will take care anyway interview got over that was the last interview after a stretch of so many years you know we went back to chennai six months everything was okay nothing happened and then the slowly whatever swami told us was unfolding one by one one by one one by one my father lost job lot of uh, 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 family confusions both the sisters and father my, oh my god it was a big fight every day there used to be a fight and it so happened my mother started i still remember as a small boy i used to go along with my mother we go to pan shop one marwadi shop she used to sell the gold ornaments get the money and we used to have food this all swami told before only so like that everything was gone and dear brothers and sisters it is not one month it is not one year eight years we were away we never stepped into prashanti nilayam when swami used to come to uh, abbotsbury in chennai for giving discourse and when swami used to stay in alwarpet yeah we used to go and have darshan but swami always maintained the distance and we never had any uh, closeness like what we had for years in prashanti nilayam swami was part of our family when it was in prashanti nilayam but now it was totally different because we have to wash away our karma swami has swami said you have to go through this and we were going through this 8 years and i was i finished my sslc and uh, i was doing my intermediate in tyagaraja college and i was doing m by pc that is pre university course then it was not 2 plus 10 plus 2 system it was only sslc and one year puc and during that time i suddenly was getting chest pain and i we thought maybe some gas problem or muscle problem or indigestion you know like that so all that uh, medicines my father is good at homeopathy and you know this and that everything we tried but you know it was re- recurring again and again 
and the intense intensity of that pain was increasing more and more and one day it was so bad that suddenly it's like a catch on my chest area and i just couldn't breathe and my left hand my left side it became numb and everything around me was becoming dark and i know i'm going to faint and even if i want to inhale my breath when i want to even slight expansion in my chest area region it's like thousand needles picking pricking in that area oh my god unbearable pain so i didn't know what to do but from childhood i have heard swami's discourse varieties of discourse and beautiful stories and this that philosophy was part of my system and then i knew when swami was telling that how you live is not important how you leave the body is very important how you live you can live the way you want that is not big thing that is not a great achievement but when you leave the body how you leave the body is very important when you leave you have to think of god you have to pray him so that what you think what you desire and that is a goal and that you will reach god this i have heard swami's discourse many times then i saw date sheet calendar our lord venkateshwara is our family deity every day we used to tear the page you know that date sheet calendar was hanging on the wall i looked at my father and i told there's a lot of pelmel around you know everybody shouting this and that what is happening you know i i'm falling like that i showed that calendar date sheet calendar and i told my father get that picture i am dying my father got upset you will not die shut up he said i could not speak i was doing that i am dying give me that picture i want to see him and die oh my god i don't know what happened and then i i'm gone i didn't know what happened how long that was i didn't know only thing i realized was suddenly something bashed on my chest and then after the heavy bashing on my chest i started breathing and then slowly slowly i light was coming the darkness was dispelling and light was coming and then i could see people of some 10 15 people around me servant lady neighbors my father my mother my sister everybody surrounding me and i seen my shirt is torn people have torn and somebody has applied ginger paste garlic paste something something and all was going on it was a mess actually it was mess and what i saw was swami's picture on my chest when my father came for the first time in 1951 he asked that was another big uh, uh, story to cut it short he asked swami swami i want you to be with me all the time and swami made him stay for a month and then in that last interview before leaving swami i want you to be with me swami said i am always with you don't escape swami not like that my father was he became very like a friend and he used to talk very freely with swami no swami you can't escape like that then swami asked what do you want i want picture and those days you know paper uh, photograph used to be uh, distributed because there no photoshops and all that paper print was used to be given swami said it is there you can take it i said swami you have to give me okay come i will give that print swami not like that you have to create and give and swami said create and give why that is enough for you no swami if you don't give me i will not leave uh, this room i will not leave from this interview room swami said you are a mondi vadu mondi vadu you are a stubborn character then he said what swami pichuku meeda brahmastrama to kill uh, a sparrow you need brahmastram you know like that he told off from his mouth to swami and swami looked at him and said kadura pichuka meeda brahmastram kadura pichuka meeda pichuka astrame vestaranu adiye nu tattuko levu no i don't need brahmastra to kill a sparrow man to kill a sparrow i will use sparrow only to kill you i don't need that kind of powerful weapon and swami told him and it was like a joke and he forgot and then swami created a photograph and he gave a small black and white photograph and in that photograph swami hair was round 
but where a swami those days used to have partition then my father looked and told swami this is different swami said pichchuvadu foolish fellow in future that is what i am going to be that is how i'll be so i am giving you that photograph that was the only photograph was somewhere hidden in our altar because in this 8 years nowhere swami's picture nothing was there in fact our house was bhajan center bhajan mandali everything is gone and we shifted house to house in that 8 years eight houses we shifted oh my god that is a different uh, uh, you know lifestyle altogether and that time my father when i said i'm going to die my father got into his head that sabi sai baba photo which he created and gave he said he will be there and he went if you are sai baba if you are god save my son and he put it on my chest and that is the time i just uh, you know inhaled i mean uh, uh, heavy breathing came and then i came back to my senses and then immediately they took me to the doctor and doctor you know those days uh, you know medical not so advanced and they, they took ecg and all that and finally they said this boy had a mild heart attack and symptoms of heart attack is there my father asked he is only 16 years how can get heart attack no no one in 10000 cases this can happen and he has got this problem angina pectoris that is a problem so therefore it can recur this can repeat you have to be very careful and he gave do's and don'ts and all the medication those days i am talking about 60s and then after two days my father told my mother chalo back to parthi that is how journey to sai after nine long years of a gap he churned you he you know he will he will do all things and in the end you will see whether you want the world or you want me and he will he will give you that kind of pressure that kind of suffocation but in spite of all these things if you say swami i need you that is enough then everything is taken care but remember dear brothers and sisters even to get that feeling baba i need you without his blessings that thought also cannot come in your mind for that also we have to be we be blessed by bhagwan if he is not blessing that way even that thought cannot emerge in our mind so the three words which swami said who are you and what swami said come experience enjoy the first word is come and i'm sure you and me and all the listeners each one came to swami your journey towards swami is totally different it is unique it is special somebody might have heard swami's bhajan become a devotee somebody has seen baba given devotee somebody prayed and his prayers are answered become a devotee so if you see there are different ways where you reach baba and baba says come and when you come to him then he gives you the experience that you are supposed to enjoy dear brothers and sisters 1977 i joined brindavan and we came back from chennai swami ignored us for 3 months because we ignored swami for 9 months swami ignored us for 3 months and those days you can stay in shed only for 2 months more than 2 months you cannot stay you have to go outside you are not permitted to stay and that time chiranjeev rao and kutum rao we know them because we are old devotees we used to keep in touch with everybody and entire swami's family and chiranjeev rao came and told kutum rao came and told babu you can't stay and that time you know ganesha temple is there near the ganesha temple there will be a ganesha shed used to be there and we stayed there swami you said you have to vacate and go and that was the time swami's sister venkamma whom we know very well and she had a room outside and she rented that room for us and we stayed outside for another 4 or 5 months and 3 months swami totally ignored and in this 3 months swami made me work and work 
and work only to ensure and give me confidence you are okay and you will be okay when you are with me i worked in the book stall you know gopuram is there there are different levels do you know what used to be there those days stock of books will come and i used to unpack and count and make the stock and i used to work in canteen i used to serve and collect the plates i used to serve food for people and i used to garden the water the uh, plants around mandir swami made me do all hard work after 3 months one day swami calls us and that is how when we enter the interview room after a period of 9 8 to 9 years and swami changed our life and he gave us the beautiful experience of staying with him dear brothers and sisters from 1977 till date we never moved out of prashanti nilayam or brindavan we lived and 30 40 years we have been here only that is how journey to sai with his open hands with full of love i say come it is up to you how you will come and embrace him the effort is yours god cannot make the effort god only show you the path and that is how the journey to sai come now the next is second word swami said was after coming you have to experience me to know who i am so how can you experience journey with the sai becomes experience journey to sai is coming journey with the sai you will experience and so many experiences are there i would like to share one very nice uh, little uh, uh, you know hilarious yet with profound meaning and you know for all of us we always have a guru and this guru is like a guide post and he shows you the direction and he tells you how you can reach god gurus can only show you the path but gurus cannot give you liberation only god can give you liberation guru can lead you to god more than that he cannot do but brothers and sisters of sai family do you know one thing we are all so lucky that we have two in one we adore sai baba as our guru and at the same time when it comes trouble he is our god to save us from the trouble so he is our guru also he is our god one very nice incident as guru i want to say one small episode every sunday you know uh, when swami comes to kulwant hall and gives you know you have seen uh, thousands of devotees sitting right from tiny tots to uh, 80 years 90 years you know wide range of people with all you know varieties and uh, from all countries they will all be seated there and baba glides and he comes softly and he speaks to us all of us and he blesses all of us and he reaches each and every one of us in a different way and then he came and stood in front of the railing and uh, opposite the primary school children used to sit and swami summoned one boy and that boy whenever swami calls anyone we will rush we will not even think you know second thought will not be there just rush that's all because swami is like sugar candy and we are all like ants just go and enjoy the sweetness so the tiny little boy 6 and 1/2 7 years old boy he came running and stood in front of swami and you know swami is a great mind reader master mind is a great mind reader the tiny little one cute one standing in front of swami in white and white and god in his bright orange robe looking at his own creation and asking him what is your name boy tells us name have you had your breakfast he said yes and the items are mentioned and then swami asked him a question how many brothers do you have and this boy said swami i have two brothers oh two brothers where are they swami they are in delhi what are they doing swami they are studying there oh only you are studying your brothers are studying in delhi yes swami oh ho 
and then Swami looked at that boy and showed the rest of the students who are sitting, thousands of them who are sitting around them. Swami asked him, who are these people then? And the little one didn't know what to say with his innocent face and innocent smile, looking at everyone around him and when looking at Swami, couldn't answer. Then Swami said, do you know, these are the boys are your real brothers. But you are thinking your two brothers are in Delhi. They are not your brothers because they left you alone. But whereas all these children, they are all living with you, studying with you, playing with you, eating with you. See, they are spending all the time with you. Do you know who is brother? These are the boys are real brothers to you. After explaining a little bit, this Lord of Lord, Guru asked the student, the disciple, how many brothers you have? And the smart little one, with a smile, looking at Swami, Swami, all are my brothers, he said. Everybody clapped. Swami felt immensely happy. And then Swami said, good boy, good boy. And immediately he asked, Swami, can I take Namaskar? He said, yeah, this go, take. And the boy takes his na take Namaskar and goes back and settle, settle down. Next Sunday, again, Swami comes, gives darshan. This Maya Nataka Sutra Dari, you know, that, uh, that Krishna aspect, it is still with Swami. He stood in the same place, holding the same railing and searching for the same little face. And this boy was sitting in the front line and Swami calls that boy. Again, he comes running. Again, Swami asked him, have you had breakfast? And what is the breakfast? Everything is over. And then now Swami is asking the second question on the second Sunday. How many wives you have? Everybody, all of us, you know, we laughed loudly. And that boy heard the question and saw all of us loudly laughing and he didn't know what to say. Then Swami again asked him, how many wives you have? So the boy has to answer. So he's seriously thinking, what should be my answer now? So he thought, last time I told two brothers, Swami said the wrong answer. Then he said, okay, we'll repeat the performance. Then immediately said, Swami, all are my wife, Swami, he said. Again, we all laughed loudly. Then the Lord turned towards us with a serious face. Ade, Ade, that is what? Bad mind. Bad thoughts, stupid people you are. We were all the laughing became silent now because Swami came very seriously. Do you know that boy? Seven years, he's so innocent. He doesn't know the meaning of wife, and he doesn't know what I am asking and what he is answering. Do you know why? Because he's innocent. God loves that innocent. God wants that kind of innocent heart. That heart is pure. That is my seat. But whereas you people have filthy thoughts, wrong thoughts, your heart and mind is full of dirty thoughts. And you say, Sai Baba, come and sit. Sai Baba, come and sit. How will I sit? Clean your mind. Clean your heart. Then that will be my place, my throne. So that Sunday, it was a great lesson for all of us. And again, that boy, he didn't understand the dialogues between us and Swami. He heard everything. Swami, Namaskaram, as usual. Swami says, yes, take. And he took Namaskaram, ran back to his place. Third Sunday, again our little Lord is walking, taking up the same place and searching for the same face, same little cute one. And Swami identified, Swami called him, come. This boy was hesitating to come. He didn't want to get up. Come. He's telling, he was, he's thinking whether to get up or not to get up because now he's worried. Every Sunday he's calling me and it's like examination. He will ask something and I will say something and he will tell me something and people are laughing around me. I don't know what is happening. So he didn't want to come. He sat quietly. Then all his friends, go man. Swami's calling, go man. And they pushed him. No option. The little one has to come. The little angel came running to Swami and looking at Swami pathetically with full of tension. And Swami, as I told you, mind reader, made a fun and made jokes and asked so many questions and all that. And then he forgot that fear psycho has come down and he's comfortable now. 
and now the guru starts looking at the disciple how many friends you have then he thought first sunday something second sunday i said all are my wife everybody laughed i don't know what to tell hmm chapu how many friends you have then suddenly he thought repeat the performance and he said swami all are my friends swami no wrong answer really swami all are my friends no wrong answer swami you only told me all are my brothers yes all are my friends also swami no that is wrong answer and swami said you think they are your real friends they are not your real friends they may study with you for 5 years 10 years after they finish their studies they will go back to their own place they will never care for you they are in their own different field you are in your own different field but do you know who is your true friend god is your true friend why even before you are born god was with you when you are living god follows you and even when you leave the body god is with you so your true friend is god and not these people these people do you know how they are they are all frogs frogs in a pond in a pond if there is water all frogs will come back 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 it will come if the same pond goes dry no frog will be around that place same way people are also like that you have name you have fame you have power you have position you have status hello sir hello sir how are you how are you sir next moment you are stripped out of your power your position your name your fame everything and you come down to zero level oh this man is coming ah huh? we'll better go this way they will avoid you they are all not your true friend when you are in trouble also god will be there and when you are in the peak of your health and prosperity and happiness still god will be always with you god is your true friend living with god is education now i would like to share one uh, quickly a small personal experience with you because nowadays people are questioning yeah swami was physically there and we enjoyed his physical proximity he used to answer our prayers and he used to respond to our prayers and we had that kind of affinity and we know to whom to pour out and to whom to can get connected but now that baba is not physically there is the situation same yes my dear yes he is still there it is only that you are denied of physical proximity but he answers each and everyone's desire your prayer whatever that you want it is answered for your information i am seeing because i am here for almost 40 50 years i am here i am seeing old devotees coming becomes less but whereas new devotees are coming they have never seen swami but they come here and they pray and their prayers are answered and they have their love and devotion is much more superior and intense than the old devotees that means what god is not here he is there is he not answering yes he is answering it is not an experience definitely it is an experience but only thing is our own ego our own illusion we put our own veil and trying to see outside whether it is clear whether it is bright the brightness is always there it became dull because you have a veil between yourself and god remove that remove that ignorance then everything is clear one small uh, a quick uh, i will give in nutshell one beautiful experience which that proved that baba is always here even answering all our prayers one day after my class when i was going and i took my scooter right in front of the hostel building not on the main road in the hostel building itself i my back side tire in the scooter no skidded and i fell down while falling i fell in front and i put my hand like this nothing happened uh, no scratch on scooter also so boys all boys were there because after the class we were all going out so i got up and then i when i was when i was getting up everything was coming but my hand was not coming i was feeling little funny 
why my hand is not coming then i touched no when i touched this was hanging separately so they thought there is a fracture in this place and then they they took a writing pad and then they tied it and immediately they took me to the hospital and then hospital they took you know quickly they took an um, uh, you know uh, x ray and all that and they found my hand this is totally dislocated this is one piece and this is one piece and it has come out the bone has come out and the bone is like this but the beauty is that my that bone did not tear the skin but it is inside and but why it happened because we always wear this full sleeves you know this protected like a sling that is why it was holding me so it did not pierce and come out because this was supporting anyway they tore the shirt and then after all the x-ray and they said that we have to do surgery there is no choice i looked at our ravi kumar is the x-ray department i told ravi and i told surgeon sir whatever according to medical term you want to do you do but only one request sir i have to play tabla for bhajans that is my only request you do what what you are supposed to do you do but see to it that i play tabla they try to pull and put it back into the socket and in the x-ray radial head there is a fracture so he has to directly and safely put it back and while doing that it so happened it was very difficult it it was placed well but that the broken piece chipped it fell separately inside only then they put in 110 degrees and they said sir one week you have to be like this they want to do that close reduction they did and then finally after one month we'll have to do one more surgery and remove the broken piece i said okay fine and then one month over then again second surgery was done and in second surgery they cut open and they want to remove the broken piece so they gave appointment i fell july 11th 2017 and august one month uh, later august was the second surgery they did and they admitted in the hospital for the procedures and i was there i was lying down in the ward my wife was uh, sleeping and the next day morning eight surgeries and they said uh, they will do my surgery first and half an hour sir everything will be done it's a small surgery i said okay sir whatever it is then i was lying down i was not sleeping so nurse came checked my bp very high then sir please sir you sleep if your bp is high they can't do surgery sir your bp should be under control i said amma i am okay no sir you are not okay sir something is bothering in your mind you should sleep then she came at 9 o'clock i didn't sleep she came at 10 o'clock i didn't sleep then finally you know i was not getting sleep my mind was disturbed and she came and gave me one sleeping tablet and some bp tablet four five tablets she dumped in my mouth so that i will rest he said tomorrow morning if you are not all right surgeon will shout at me that i am not you know preparing you for the ot i said yes madam i am not doing anything now i am lying down only quietly i did not sleep till 130 i was thinking in my mind swami if only you were to be here like all we feel no physically if you are here you would have sent vibhuti prasadam you would have asked surgeon what is the problem and you know that would have been a great support a solace a strength for me to go through this ot procedures you were not there what will happen to me why you left me i was crying my wife told sai why are you bothering yourself so much no no i should be all right i should play tabla for swami's bhajan she said sai you played when swami sang for swami's bhajan you played you played for all the programs you played for 40 years be happy god gave you so much of chance you don't worry first thing is you should be all right rest everything we can see later and she was trying to console me i said okay and then last i saw was 130 then i maybe i slept i think and i kept my alarm at 5 o'clock to get up for the morning procedures just before that i don't know even today whether it is a dream or it is a reality swami entered the room and swami stood next to me and i could see behind swami the blue tiles of the walls you know everything i could see clearly and swami looked at me and said hey who tied this in telugu he said your katta redi who tied this 
I said, Swami, nurse. Surgery had to happen. Okay. Before only, Swami is asking, who tied this? Not tied very well. Then he told, tell them to tie very well. I will go to the next room and come back. And Swami left the room. And I saw one nurse running inside the room with a trolley. And then she ties. After 10 minutes, Swami enters the room. Swami looks, ah, Ipudu sariga kattaru, anni saripo indale, em kangar ledu, saripo tundi, Swami told. And then Swami patted. And then Swami left. I woke up. When I saw it was about to ring, five o'clock, it was just about to ring. And just I opened my eyes. And I called my wife and I told Swami, I don't know whether he stood here and spoke to me or it is illusion or it is dream, I do not know. But this is what happened. He said, see, yesterday night you cried, no, that Swami is not there, Swami is not there. See, Swami himself came and gave you assurance. Sai, you leave it to him and he will take care. Then I figured, okay, fine. Then I went. Surgery got over. And he planned for half an hour, but it became one hour because that one single bone got fragmented into six pieces and it was scattered all over. And the surgeon came out with that broken piece, I believe. My wife and my son who is also a doctor sitting outside. Sai, you see here, it was one piece. It has become six piece. It was Swami's grace. Not even one piece crushed any nerve. If only if it would have crushed any part of the nerve, his left hand, his right hand would have become numb. He will not have senses on his fingers. Swami has beautifully spread everywhere other than touching the nerves. And that is why surgery it became too long because I have to fish out carefully. And you see, it became six pieces and he showed, I believe. And then anyway, everything is done. And they brought me from, and from the anesthesia. And the first thing they asked me was, move your fingers, move your fingers. And then I moved my fingers. Then I heard everybody telling Sairam because everything was done and my fingers are perfect. Means I'm able to move all my fingers nicely. Anyway, I was sent to ICU. I was there for some time. And then next day I came to my room and morning our, you know, they always take around. Our surgeon enters our room. And he said, Sai sir, how are you? I said, fine. Any pain? No, no, no. Yesterday, I think that anesthesia is still working. It is still numb and I don't have any pain at all. Good, good. And then he removed uh, the bed sheet. The moment he removed the bed sheet, he said, who tied this? I said, I don't know, sir. They only tied this. Hey, nurse. And the nurse comes with the trolley. Same nurse coming with the trolley. And then he said, give me everything. I will do it. And then he put on the gloves and, you know, he sterilized his hand and he removed everything and he neatly packed once again and he said, ah, now everything is perfect, everything is all right, nothing to worry. I immediately held that surgeon's hand. Sir, the same place yesterday before the surgery, Swami stood. The same dialogues what you told. He said, he asked me who tied. I said, nurse, a nurse comes with the trolley. Nurse is coming with the trolley. And there the nurse tried, but here you tied it. And Swami came back to the room again. He asked the same three questions. Now everything is all right, nothing to worry. Swami told in Telugu, the same sequence you are telling in English. Sir, I told. I said, he tears rolled down from his eyes and he said, Sai, Swami is here with us. We all feel that Swami is not here. Swami is very much here. Dear brothers and sisters, it is not that. That is not the end of the story. I asked him, sir, when I can play tabla? He said, one, one and a half years. I said, why? As a doctor, I can help you after the physiotherapy. I will help you to eat. Your hand has to reach here. You have to comb. You have to brush. You have to put on your buttons. That much only I can do. Playing tabla is an extra effort. That is not in my purview. That is between you and Sai Baba. You and Swami. But I can only help you this much. But to become that strength, you have to do physiotherapy. Thanks to my wife. Every day, morning and evening, she used to do massage at home. And in one week, my hand from this position to this position. And he was surprised. The next week, from this position, 
surgeon was surprised he said how fast you are recovering very good if you can continue like this in one hour one year you can play tabla that pepped me more and i started doing much more exercise and much more she was helping in fact full credit 100% credit goes to my wife for making me my hand which was like this now it is like this this much and then november 11th swami is akhand bhajan 24 hours you know global bhajan Every bhajan, Swami gives me indication, I used to start, years, I used to start the bhajan. And last bhajan, I used to play and finish with Aarati. That was like a tradition, it was going on. So all bhajan boys said, Sir, this is the first time, so many years, Swami used to give you indication, you used to start, you used to finish, and now we'll be missing you, Sir. I really felt that really I'm going to miss this Akhand bhajan. In my house, one old tabla was there. I thought, why not, I try. So I tried. Oh my God, it was like uh, when you t strike a matchstick and put inside the skin, how it will burn. Like that, the, maybe the blood was rushing so fast and so much of pain was there. Uh, unbearable pain, pain, just cannot handle that. But I tried and tried and tried a little bit like that, four or five days I did. Then on the Akhand Bhajan day, which is 11th November, I told boys, I will come and sit. I will mime. As if I am playing, but whereas you play along with me, because two two boys used to play tabla, you play along with me. At least I'll have the satisfaction that I played for Swami, for Akhand Bhajan. Ravi and all said, Sir, you are taking risk. Not even oh, six months, sir, it's just three months after second surgery. Why you want to take risk? I said, See, man, I am doing it for Swami. Swami will take care. Ravi, if anything happens, you are there. You know my condition, you know my history. You will take me to super special hospital. I'm not worried. Then they all laughed and kept quiet. Bhajan started. Brothers and sisters, you will not believe. First line, it was burning. Second line, third line, second speed. I forgot myself and I played for four bhajans equally with my partner. Equally with my partner, I played. Everybody was surprised. And... The same surgeon who told me one year, he was watching this Akhand Bhajan from Sydney. He had gone for a conference and he looked at the people there. This boy, I did surgery and he wanted to play tabla. I told him it will take one year. And you see what Sai Baba is doing in Prashanti Nilayam. Within three months after two surgeries, he's playing tabla. This is what Baba can do. That is an experience. Tell me, brothers and sisters. Where is Baba? Baba is not here. He is here. He is not listening to you. Yes, he is listening to you. But if you feel that he is not listening, if you feel that he is not answering, it is not his mistake. It is your mistake. There is some fault in you. There is something less in you. You are not, that wavelength is not matching between you and God. That effort is yours. This is the second word what Swami said. Experience. When Swami asked, somebody asked Swami, Who are you? Come. Journey to Sai is come. Journey with Sai is an experience. I am sure it is not me, those listeners here and those people, so many devotees, each one of you will be having a unique such experiences with Bhagavan. And the third word Swami said, enjoy after experiencing me you know what i am then you enjoy my divinity the third statement is journey ends with sai how you say ends with sai because you come to sai and you experience sai you have to be part of sai you have to end with sai now how you can do this a very simple thing s a i sai sai and i in our life, if you put, yes, Swami first, I, me, last, your journey is safe. But if you put I first, and if you put yes, last, then like IAS, you'll be collector only, you'll be collecting things, but you will not get any divinity aspect. You know, you are, you are left alone. So Swami, we have to put Swami in front and we have to follow him. Yes, AI. Then Sai and I, that is Sai and us, we become one. Our journey will end with sigh. You ask anybody, how are you? I am 
in bliss man he says you see i am in bliss when you are in bliss you are smaller you are humbled you are surrendered you are part of bliss bliss is not different from you this is where swami says end joy so that you will enjoy the bliss and this is what baba always gives us dear brothers and sisters arjuna what happened he always followed krishna krishna says pigeon yes crow yes peacock yes why because he kept krishna first and himself last all of us keep sai in front and take your journey that will be most pleasant journey that you will have safest journey you will have you will reach your destination before i wind up i usually give a take away and today take away is choose wisely and choose god every time a small story father and son the young son looked at his father and he asked me dad did any time i made you cry and dad looks at the little loving son he says hmm once but i will not say i cried when dad when you are born they brought you and placed on my arms and when i saw you smiling at me and the beautiful creation of god and the joy led me to drop few tears do you know what is a tear one drop of water 99% of feeling 1% water 99% of feeling but that was not crying that was out of joy that means you never i may never made you cry yes there was one occasion you made me cry when dad when you are growing i was playing with you i kept one pen i kept a bundle of dollars and i kept a teddy bear and i stood opposite to you and with lot of inquisitive nature i want to know which one you will pick up whether a pen or a bundle of dollars or this teddy bear because if you that will decide your life that will decide what you are that will decide your value what you will value in your life suppose if you pick up the pen knowledge you'll become a scholar if you become bundle of dollars richness name fame power position if you pick up teddy bear you wanted fun in your life nothing else you just want to enjoy so i want to see which one you will select and that will be the value that you will associate to your life and i was eagerly waiting and what you did you rushed towards those three i was wondering which one you will pick up but you brush aside everything and you straight came to my arms just then i decided Oh my god I was also one of the choice for you to be selected I was all the time thinking only the pen and only the dollar and only the toy but I never realized that you had one more choice to select and that is me and that is the time really I shed tears and I cried for the love that you gave me that day dear brothers and sisters who is our father our god father Swami is our godfather and he in his creation he has thrown many things in front of us gold money everything all attractions car bungalow everything and he is watching what is that you are going to pick up and we all the time race with each other and we don't say beyond that we see within this only and we fight for it we struggle for it and we take it and then we are there only saturated none of us go back one step like the little kid went and reached the arms of his father and god is also waiting with his open arms whether anyone will come and approach him adore him reach him appreciate him understand him love him that is what he is waiting for 
but we are all there itself what we need is name fame power position because we feel that this is what is very important my dear brother and sister during this pandemic period two days back you speak to somebody and the third day is not there what he carried his power what he did his money what he did his position what he did nothing still we are in ignorance still we didn't understand when god is teaching universally to all of us that what is very important and how you should have your journey and this is where brothers and sisters please all of us choose wisely choose sai choose the path towards prashanti nilayam because prashanti nilayam is the place where god walked god lived god loved everyone thank you for this wonderful opportunity and i'm grateful to you because uh such kind of satsang takes me uh it's like rewinding my life again and again i'm thinking of those beautiful moments with this bhagwan with this lord rich with experiences and i'm sure all of you will be having similar uh, such experiences and i pray swami that all of you you will be blessed immensely with good health peaceful family peaceful life and stay safe and take care and i pray swami that all of you very very soon you must come to prashanti nilayam relive your life enjoy every moment and prashanti nilayam the abode of peace is waiting for you and this is the place where god lived god walked and god is waiting for you thank you jai sai ram